Hello and welcome to Tector Edge. Buying a mechanical keyboard can be a complicated process if you've never done it before. So much variety, so many switch types. Well this video is going to serve as a one-stop shop for everything you need to know about choosing a switch type for your keyboard. I'm probably going to have a lot of keyboard content in the future, so subscribe to see more. Keyboards work in a pretty straightforward way. You press down a key, the key press then registers, or actuates, and the letter you typed appears on screen. Most consumer keyboards are membrane keyboards, which means there is a physical plastic membrane between the keys and the circuit board. When you press down on a key, this pushes down on the membrane, and that registers the key press on the circuit board, which sends it to your computer. That means there is essentially one switch to manage all 100 or more keys on your keyboard. Whilst they are very cheap and easy to manufacture, membrane keyboards have a lot of problems. First and foremost is that typing on a membrane keyboard will tend to feel mushy. If you're applying anything more than light pressure, your keys will hit the bottom and it will almost feel as if your keyboard is fighting up against you. Over time, this can cause injury or fatigue. And if your wrist is always cramped, people will start to judge you. Trust me. Another problem with membrane keyboards is longevity. Dirt can accumulate easier, keys can get stuck together, the membrane can wear out, and they can be difficult to repair. These are the two biggest problems, but there are dozens of others. It's probably a safe bet to say that anything you dislike about typing is probably caused by having a membrane keyboard. Mechanical keyboards work differently. Every single button has its own independent spring-loaded switch underneath, which allows greater control. It's much harder to accidentally press two buttons simultaneously, much easier to clean or repair, and allows you to decide on a typing experience that suits you. You can buy keyboards with many different types of switch, each of which will feel different. Most mechanical keyboards will offer Cherry MX switches. Cherry is a very popular brand of keyboard switch. Cherry color codes their switches so you know exactly what you're getting. In this guide, I'm going to cover the six most popular and wildly available Cherry MX switches. The red, black, brown, blue, green, and clear switches. The color code is derived from the color of the switch underneath the keycaps. So if you take the cap off, you will see a colored plus sign. This is the actual switch itself. As you can see, this is a Cherry MX blue switch. A good thing to know is that there are two different categories of mechanical switches, linear and tactile. A linear switch is exactly what it says on the tin. When you press down on the key, the switch moves from top to bottom, and when it re reaches the bottom, the key press actuates and the letter you are typing will appear on screen. A tactile switch is a little different in that you don't have to press the key all the way down to actuate it. There is a little bump known as the actuation point at some point on the switch. As you can see on this switch, when I press it, it catches about halfway down. This is the actuation point of this switch, so I don't have to press it all the way down to type with it. This bump also provides tactile feedback to the typist, so you can easily feel at which point the key is being pressed without looking. If you press too hard and go past the actuation point, this is called bottoming out. And while there's nothing really wrong with it, it does mean the bottom half of the key press is just wasted energy. So let's get into each different switch by Cherry. First up is the Cherry MX Red Switch. The Red Switch is a light linear switch, so there is no tactile bump here. It goes straight from top to bottom. It is extremely light and easy to press down on, which is a huge advantage in things such as gaming where you might need to rapidly press the same key over and over again. It requires you to apply just 45 grams of force to actuate the switch. This isn't great for typing, since it's much easier to accidentally press keys you didn't mean to. Because of how little effort it takes to actuate the switch, it is easy to bottom out hard and create a small amount of noise, so this is generally a quiet switch. The red key switch is the switch that feels most like a membrane keyboard and will take very little time to adjust to, so it can be a good beginner switch and is a great option for gaming. But if you do a lot of typing, the lack of tactile feedback and the ease of bottoming out hard means some finger fatigue will still happen. Cherry MX black switches are essentially heavier red switches. They are still a linear switch, so a simple top to bottom actuation with no tactile feedback but they require 60 grams of force to actuate, so a lot more effort than a red switch. This means it's harder to accidentally press keys you don't mean to, and also prevents you from bottoming out as hard as you can with red keys, which reduces fatigue. In a similar vein, it makes it harder to press the same key in rapid succession, which means it isn't great for some fast-paced games, though it isn't so heavy as to put you off typing. Where I think it is best for is in strategy games or in productivity tasks, when you're holding down keys a lot. If you are video editing, for example, uh, you will 
probably make a lot of use of shortcuts such as Control plus K, and I think the black switch is the best example of a switch to use for such tasks. The black switch could make a good beginner switch, but its lack of tactile bump still means it's not great for touch typing. The Cherry MX Brown switch is one of the most popular switches, and for good reason. It is a tactile switch, which means that there is a small bump halfway down to provide feedback. The brown key requires 45 grams of force to actuate, the same as a red switch, but whereas the red switch requires 45 grams of force to move it from top to bottom, the brown switch only needs to move half that distance to the actuation point. The brown switch is very easy to actuate and the tactile bump is small and hard to notice. This makes it very easy to press too hard and bottom out, but it provides you with the best of both linear and tactile switches. You can press keys in rapid succession with ease like a red switch which is good for gaming and typing or just for typing. This is probably the best all-round switch and is a safe option for mechanical keyboard newbies. They are a very quiet switch. Blue switches are another tactile switch that are a little heavier than brown switches at 50 grams of actuation force, though still reasonably light. The main standout of the Cherry MX Blue is that it is clicky. Like the keyboards of old, the blue makes a bit of a racket when the switch is actuated. This is both a positive and a negative. As with the brown switches, the tactile feedback on the blue switch can be easy to miss, so having the clicky keys provides a type of audio feedback which can be very helpful when typing, and it's a bit of a nostalgia trip if you grew up with the old IBM keyboards or even on typewriters. On the downside though, a keyboard using blue switches is going to piss off everyone around you, so it's not for office use. If you buy a mechanical keyboard, it is very likely you will end up using a red, brown, blue or black switch, as these are far and away the most common switches in mainstream keyboards. But if you want to go even further, some enthusiast grade keyboards will include even more specialist switches, such as the green switch. The green switch is the blue switch on steroids. It is a medium heavy switch that at 80 grams of actuation force is the heaviest switch I've used and requires about 62% more effort to press than a blue switch. It's also noisier. This switch will likely be too heavy and loud for most people, but if you learn to type on a typewriter, which I did, or an older style IBM keyboard, you should be right at home here. The Cherry MX Green Switch used to be quite hard to come by, but it's now making its way into more mainstream keyboards, but it's still a fairly niche switch aimed at pretty hardcore typists. And last but not least is the Cherry MX Clear. The Clear is still an enthusiast grade keyboard switch, and most keyboards from major manufacturers will not have an option for clear switches. The Clear Switch is a tactile switch with a light to medium actuation force that puts it somewhere between the blue and green switches. But unlike the blue and green switches, it is silent, so it's perfectly suited to an office environment. And also unlike every other switch I've shown you today, the clear switch actually provides enough tactile feedback to stop even a heavy presser such as myself from bottoming out, which makes this a perfect switch for typists or programmers. It's light enough to still be used for gaming, though it's not as good as the brown switch as being an all-rounder. Cherry actually makes quite a few more switches, though none are readily available to purchase on pre-made keyboards. So if you hang around keyboard enthusiast communities, you will either find guides on how to replace the switches on your current keyboard, or find limited quantity keyboards that have specialized switches, or even guides on how to make your own keyboard. The most common rare switches are Cherry MX Whites, which are heavier than blues, and Cherry MX Greys, which come in both linear and tactile varieties and are heavier than black and blue switches. A relatively new switch is the Cherry MX Nature White switch, which is a linear switch that is heavier than a red switch, but lighter than a black switch. Other brands that aren't Cherry, such as Kale and Gatoron, also have their own ranges of switches. So which switch is best? Well, it's up to you to determine depending on your needs. If you are a heavy gamer, a linear switch such as black or red is probably a good option, though if you do a lot of typing, a brown or even blue switch might be more up your alley. The best way to find out is to try them all and see. A switch tester like this one costs about $15 from WASD Keyboards. MechanicalKeyboards.com also offers an 8 switch tester which includes white and grey switches, though they seem to be out of stock a lot. Only once you've used all of them will you really be able to make an informed choice. I will actually rank these switches in order from least favourite to favourite because who doesn't love a good top 6 list? This list is my personal opinion and may differ slightly from what I've said above because my use cases are fairly specific. At number 6 is the Cherry MX Red Switch. I don't really like the Red Switch at all, it's too light, too easy to accidentally press extra keys and just not great for typing. Number 5 is the Blue Switch. I don't actually dislike the Blue Switch, but the Green Switch kind of renders it pointless. 
It's too light for my preference, and if I'm using a light switch, I'd rather it be silent. The number four spot goes to the Cherry MX Brown switch. There's nothing really to dislike here. I use Browns on my main keyboard because they are just good at everything, typing, gaming, or productivity. But I do bottom them out every time, so I feel like I need a heavier switch. Number three goes to the heavier switch, the green. I was fully expecting the green to take out my top spot since I have a bias towards heavier switches, but it didn't provide as much tactile feedback as I wanted and I'm not a huge fan of the noise. Number one and two are almost too close to core, but number two is going to go to the Cherry MX black switch. I was surprised at how much I like the black switch. While it doesn't have a tactile bump, it is heavy enough to provide a quasi tactile feedback and would be my number one pick for if you needed a switch for productivity that didn't require a lot of typing. Not that it's bad for typing, but browns, blues, greens, and clears all do it better. So that leaves the clear winner, the clears. God, I'm hilarious. Uh, the clear switches, while not as heavy as the greens, provide a much more notable tactile bump that is both very rewarding and makes it much harder to bottom out. They are nearly as light as a brown or blue switch, which means the clears are easy to type with, and while they're not as good for gaming, they are still usable for it, unlike greens. And that's my guide to choosing Cherry MX switches. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, drop a like below and feel free to ask me any questions. Thanks for watching TechDredge. I will see you next week.